Hello everyone, so today I wanted to talk about uh, rosehip oil. Um, rosehip oil was like a huge thing a couple of years back. It was like a miracle oil that everyone was turning to and then it sort of got replaced a little bit by argan oil and now I feel like it's the argan oil is being a bit replaced by the barberry fig. Well, regardless, I think it's an awesome oil and I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about it. Rosehip is like a common name, so there are three different plants that I know of that it comes from. Rosa muscata, Rosa rubiginosa and um, Rosa canina. Um, so Rosa muscata, hopefully I'm pronouncing it correctly, is the musk rose. Um, and the Rosa canina is the dog rose. I'm not really too sure, not too familiar with um, the other one. I've been quite familiar with rose hips since the young ages. My grandma used to have a plant and she used to collect them and dry them out to make a tea. Um, that's probably why I really love the smell, you know, kind of reminds me of my childhood. And um, from all the different uh, species, um, I don't really know if there's any difference between, you know, how potent they are. Obviously, the brands do tell you that. Uh, some brands do tell you that there is like their plant that they're using is superior to the other but I've not actually seen any any studies done about it so I don't I don't really know I can only go on how effective a product is for me personally and how much I like it um, the Rosa Canina is the one that both Trilogy and Pi use in their rose hip oils um, the flowers of the plants are a lot smaller than your general garden variety rose that you would be putting in bouquet. Um, the fruit that they bear it kind of looks a little bit like a cranberry, it's kind of like a reddish berry sized fruit. Um, I wish I had like one to show you guys, uh, but I haven't picked any up. Like, I do have a plant um, growing not too far away from me. Um, how to when they're used for a tea or something they're normally dried and it's uh, best to sometimes you can use them whole but the inside the fruit the seeds themselves are kind of like furry um a bit like if you can think of like you know like inside of an artichoke so they're quite um, irritating so you don't really want to be swallowing it or anything like that so the part of um, the rose hip that it's used like for consumption it's like the skin it's quite thin so I have one bit dried here this is what it looks like when it's like the dried shell of the skin this is this is how thin it is even when the fruit of it is not dried it's about the same same sort of thickness it's quite thin um, so majority of the oils that you see are done from the rosehip seeds themselves um, pie uses both the seed and the fruit in their oil mixture that's why it's quite different um, yeah this is a I've not tried like I've not used many rosehip oils just because when I tried them in the store you know just to see what the texture was like I thought it was a little bit too thick and I didn't like it um, the one that I do use is from pie um, this is what it looks like I'm not normally a big fan of um, glass see-through glass bottles but I kind of like it with pie because I can I still store it in a dark cupboard um, and I do really like like this cheerful bright orange colour of the oil itself um, and I like that I can actually see uh, although so it might not be ideal you know to store the oil it kind of visually pleasing to me the great thing about rose hips in general, you know, like for internal like consumption, it's a great source of vitamin C. However, it doesn't really transform into the oil. So it's like the oils, and as far as I'm aware, like they don't boost any vitamin C properties for topical spin, uh, for topical application. However, they do have an ingredient that it kind of transforms uh, into vitamin A so it kind of acts almost like a natural retinol um, in effect so it does 
it's very good in terms of um, skin tone, it can help with acne scarring, although it's not advised to be used on active acne, so if you've got like, good spots and stuff, it's probably not the best oil to use with them for that period of time. Um, but otherwise, it's, it's a really, really good one to use. Um, I claim that their rosehip oil is the most potent one uh, on the market at the moment. Um, it's quite light. It has this. It does smell exactly like dried rosehips would. Um, from what I've read on uh, Spirit Beauty Lounge, they advise it to be either used at night or used with um, sunscreen because of the vitamin because of the way vitamin A reacts um, in the sun and stuff so it's probably a good caution to take but I tend to use it at night and I always wake up with like really really nice skin it's definitely one of my favorite oils to use in general and I've not had any problems uh, with in terms of sensitivities and stuff one other thing I wanted to mention is um, if you've seen Aubrey Organics products like Rosa Muscata, um, that's actually a registered trademark, so it's, the, it's not the name of the plant itself. So yeah, when you think about like all these wonder ingredients, you kind of have to choose which one works best for you. Um, in general, I do prefer this to the argan oil, although I have recently found a brand that I actually do enjoy using quite a lot. In terms of anti-aging, retinols are probably one of the more potent, more successful ingredients uh, when it comes to mainstream cosmetics. So if you, if, if you want to go a more natural route, uh, pie rosehip oil is probably one of your better options. And it has worked for really well for me personally. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I know it's been a little bit shorter than my other ones, but I thought I'd give you guys a break. Um, yeah, hopefully I'll see you in my next one.